Gary Jenkins and welcome to the beauty of oil painting series number five and today we're going to do something a little different than than normal I'm going to paint some water lilies and some lily pads and all we'll see what kind of trouble we can get into let's look at the painting up here well there it is well 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 look at the beautiful blues and the greens and the complementing pink so oh we got a lot of stuff in here a lot of good stuff to show you even I see a little purple in there too whoa, whoa. let's look at the canvas I'm working on now you know I only have a short amount of time up here guys so I've got some of the lily pads already in let me show you what color I have in the background this is cobalt blue now I put this in in advance with acrylic cobalt blue with acrylic coming down to either a turquoise or cerulean. I think I used turquoise in here and it was uh, water based and I let it dry. Then I went in, I just put on, just before I came on to do this for you, I put some linseed oil on here. You can't see it, but it's on there just to help the strokes flow. Now I've got some of the lily pad started and this is just chrome oxide green. The main thing that you have to watch out for when you're doing these uh, lily pads is to keep them oval. Now I've taught several of these and the main problem I found that people have is they're making them round and they fall right off the page. Now we want the, before we put the flowers and stuff in and all the goodies, we gotta make it look like these lily pads fade into the background. Maybe we'll put a little black, chrome oxide green, black. This is a small filbert. What is that going to do? Yeah, it's more of a horizontal stroke. This is good old oil paint. I know I forget to tell you, but that's what I'm using up here. Now we want, notice it's just sort of horizontal stroke. We're going to take a little of this cad red light put with the green because it looks a little light up there. And adds a little bit of an orange touch to it. I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna kind of blend some of these out because it is sort of a vignette shape. Up in here, less pressure, and they just use your finger and it just fades away. Less pressure, it's just all gonna go bye-bye because we'll bring some light out. You have to have the dark underneath in order to bring light into your painting. Maybe, now we're gonna just sort of walk it down so it ties right in with the lily pads that we have down below. So we have this nice sort of a S curve coming down. Yeah. Maybe we have a few where you can just barely see some sneaking out on the side. Okay, now we're really going to punch it right about in here. I'm going to take our yellow and our white, very dry, because as you know, the dry sticks to the wet underneath. And we're just going to use just a feeling of some of these that are way in the back, catching the light. Mm-hmm. Another one here, here, take your time, pulling it out, okie dokie. Now we're going to take our blending brush and soften up some of these edges. Okay, let's pull back a little bit because this is very impressionistic back here. And if you guys are really up close to it, it looks like a bunch of little strokes. Okay, let's see what it looks like if we're looking at it from a distance where most people, that's about right, most people will look at your paintings from maybe four or five feet away, not really up close. If you looked at a lot of the old masters like Renoir, the old boys that did a lot of impressionistic stuff, 
if you just took a little picture or if you looked really up close at a little section, you'd see nothing but strokes in there. It's not until you move back that the eye fills in everything. It mixes color. A lot of the, uh, in the old days, they went through several different uh, phases. Cubism, and then they went into dotism. And dotism is where they put little dots of color, like uh, your complementing colors next to each other, and the eye would, would uh, mix the colors together. They wouldn't be actually mixed on the canvas, it's the eye that's doing it. So when you stand back and look at dotism, your eyes mix the colors. And it's a beautiful effect, but if you just look at it close, it's just a bunch of little dot dots. Okay, at, now that light, we're going to come on down and ind just indicate that there's something happening back here. They're so far back, guys, that you're not going to see detail. Uh-huh. Way up here, just a hint. And remember, I have linseed on there, which is helping these strokes to flow along. This is yellow and white. Yellow and white. I want a really bright spot right in there. And you see, if you put a whole bunch of little strokes in there, actually one stroke is hitting the other stroke. And if it gets too hard, use your blender to kind of knock it down, to soften it and pull it out of focus. Our main area that we want to people to look at will be up front. But I want to make sure we get this in. And it kind of fades away into nothing. This is the fun stuff in the back. <laughs> We could take our little liner brush. We'll pick up a little white and yellow. Go way back here. And we're also going to pick up a couple little dot, little, maybe this little uh, reflections of light coming in. I photographed this when I, uh, I used to live in a house near a lake. And it was full of these lily pads and lilies. And I used to go out in my canoe and photograph them. Well, one day I'm out there in my canoe. This was in one of the southern states. And I'm photographing, leaning over the canoe, photographing them. And I saw something out of the side of my eye. And what it was was an alligator. Well, you know, when you're in a canoe, <laughs> you're so low down, we're almost eye to eye. Well, I'll tell you, I got that paddle, and I paddled so fast, the front of the canoe was up in the air, and I'm going along, a big wake behind me, and I was out of there. I put my canoe up, and I said, that's the last time I'm going out there, because I'm in their territory. Yeah. A little, a little story. <laughs> we have a little light right in here. I like to get, I don't want to just paint lily, water lilies and lily pads. It, it gets boring. I want to punch it up. Look at the light going in. We're going to have some reflection coming in. Wipe your brush. Let's pick up a little cobalt blue, which is a little darker blue. Yeah, and mix that in. Watch me wiggle this brush. Wiggle the brush to get little things happening. We'll work that back. Work it over some of those pods or pads. Yes, look how loose and free. We have another area right in here. I'm going to start with the point of the brush, and then I go to the flat, and I wiggle and come back. And wiggle and come back. Come on, da do 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 over the top over the top of the pads. Set it down, get some stuff happening. Well, not that bad. <laughs> Take our blender brush. Hit it maybe just on the downstroke. Yes. Do we have enough sparkle before we start with other stuff? No, we don't. I'm gonna take my white. And I'm gonna come right in. Oh, 
you know what I'm going to do? I want to take my white. <laughs> I'm going to take it a, a little bit of cad red light. Oh, my brush is dirty. Mm. We're going to take our white. Well, let's take a little orange with the white. Just a little. Now we're going to take that. What is that going to do? Can you see how bright that is? Look, a little touch of orange. So you don't, don't very seldom do you use white by itself. Now watch how the light hits, and it slowly comes out into some little dot dots. Because I want it to look like it's, there's a glow right in this area, a glow. Now this wasn't in the photograph I took. You cannot copy from a photograph and have everything in it. That's otherwise, if it had everything, why paint? Just tang the photograph. But because the fo photo can't capture what's in your uh, a photo, a uh, camera has no mind. It's just a lens, and it just does what you tell it to do. What fun is that? So what you're going to do, unless you were a fellow by the name of Ansel Adams, who took all of these wonderful photos. But he did a lot of his stuff in the dark room. He layered uh, uh, negatives one on top of the other. And he was very creative in the dark room. He just didn't go out and click. He was super guy. I mean, there's a lot of photographers out there that are very creative. So I don't want you to think that I'm putting down photography, because I'm not, because there's a lot of beautiful stuff out there. But this particular painting, we're just going beyond, beyond the, the, the photograph. Let's see, do I, I want to make sure I have everything in here for you. I get what I can. You know, I can't show you everything, but every, everything will be in the book for you. I know, I know you guys are going, because I talk to a lot of you folks on the phone. And you say, well, how do you do the backgrounds, and how do you do this, and how do you, I, I know. Now, I'm going to do a show on backgrounds. If I haven't already done it for you, I will be doing one. I'm going to show you all the drippies and all that stuff. This is series number five. We have a lot of neat stuff we're going to be showing you coming your way. Let's put in a water lily. Our water lily is going to sit right about in here. We're going to take a little crimson, maybe a touch of phthalo red rose and white. And we're going to have a stem. It's not straight. Just side of the brush and comes down. And it's going to sneak in behind that water lily. We're going to take a little sap green. And where that stem is, we're going to put a little shadow coming out, which gives that stem a little more of a three-dimensional look. We're going to take our crimson with our filbert, very dry, right in the middle. And we're going to place this dark in here, just a dark color. This is going to give us something for our petals to flow into. Looks a little weird, doesn't it? <laughs> We're going to come down to the palette and pick up a little cad red light. Maybe a little touch of yellow. And very dry. We're going to put some of that in the middle. Because you can't go around sneaking stuff in. It looks better if you can just have it look more natural if you just plunk it in in the beginning. Thaler red, rose, and white. Thaler red, rose, and white. Small filbert. We start with a point and twist. Maybe it needs to be a little wider there. Another one here. You see it happen? Another one here. Ba boom. Another one here. Not too many petals. People make the mistake doing the water lily of putting too many petals in. It's really quite, it's just a simple flower. Uh, Thalo red rose and white, a little more white, because we do have some petals that are overlapping here. Mm -hmm. And another one here. See it? Mm, let's do that better job. Ba -bing! Then we have some that are foreshortened. We have another one. Th these are skinnier, right in there. Maybe a little shot right in there. Clean it up. We're going to take our white and place a little in there. 
Let's get a little more of that beautiful pink. Now you see the light is just a lighter value. Okay, and a little in there. Don't overdo. Let's back up and look at that flower. Back up. Yeah, smooth it out a little bit. All right, and in there. Just a hint. Yes, that looks good. I'm going to take a little more of that real pale pink and throw it in there. Yo. Okay, where else do we have? Oh, we got a little baby down here on the bottom. Let's take our crimson. Oh, I'm going to sneak a little green in with the crimson. And we're going to have another baby one right in here. And it's the same thing. We're going to take... Well, this one doesn't have a lot of dark, but we're going to put a little dark in the middle anyway. No color in the center of this one because it's so, it's just a teeny, it's just a baby. And we're going to put, whoop, don't want to get too light with it. Look, you just put it in because you know you need something to flow into it. There it is. Not a lot of petals. And coming around the, the back side. Some are skinny, some are wide. Okay. Let's make it a little bit lighter. Take a little more pink. Yeah. Maybe it's catching some of the light that's coming in. Maybe it has a little guy over the top. Who knows? Looks a little light right there, so we'll kind of calm that down. Okay. Maybe this little fellow Crimson and sap green. Maybe that has a little reflection coming out into the water. Yes. Okay, now the fun starts. Remember that whenever you're out there on a lake and you see these things, there's always a lot of grass and a lot of kind of junk floating around. Oh, you know what? I see some others and I better get those in. Let's take our pink before we put our grass in. I see one sticking out of here. Just a hint. See it? Maybe some of them, this is Thalo Red Rose. Maybe some of them have a little more pink. And don't make a big deal of these. They are just kind of there. Let's get a little more pink on that guy. And back here. As, as it goes back, all you're going to see is color because you don't see detail back in there. And this will keep the eye up front where it belongs. Now we're going to put our grass in. The grass is put in very wet. Sap green, chrome oxide green, a little yellow in there. And in it goes. Nice, long, graceful strokes. Yeah, and they kind of fade away into nothing on the bottom. We do have some, and use your uh, uh, paint thinner, not your medium. The paint thinner will give you a nice thinner stroke. Some of these come up way up. I don't know if I'll have time to get everything in, but the finished painting will be in the book for you, don't forget, for you to refer to, because I don't want to leave you guys wanting. How did you do that? Let's get another one. Now this takes all the time getting all this stuff in. And take your time and don't get thick. Your strokes need to be very delicate, very thin. Some of them are wide and they come up. Some will come up and then bend over. Up and bend over. See it? Whoa, there's a bright one. <laughs> gets too bright, you can knock it back down. Just throw it out of focus. Matter of fact, let's just throw the bottom out of focus. We could take uh, a yellow and our pale blue, which is will cool off some of these. Mm -hmm. And here, hold your brush way in the back. Some of them you barely see. There it goes. So it's grassy, grassy, grassy. Some of them are a little bit lighter and some are a little bit darker. Mm 
I get quiet when I'm doing this stuff. There's a whole bunch back here. Yeah, I wanted to do this painting for you, even though it is a little bit much to do in this time frame. But what this does, it gives you a direction to go in. It shows you, I showed you everything you need to know. All this grass is just repetitive stuff. So don't forget some of your grass back here. And as you come back with your grass, you will slowly, slowly back off from it. Okay, so you can put more grass back in there. Let's put take our yellow and blue. Yellow and blue. <laughs> I'm going colorblind. Or blue and white. And we may get a little more ripple in there. See? See? And again, if it gets too hard, use your blending brush. Now, I don't have everything in this guy. But I have a few more ripples up here. Now, I don't want to spend my time putting more grass in here. You guys are quite capable of doing that. But I did want to show you a painting I have of some koi. I love to paint koi fish. <laughs> this, this painting is a, quite a large one. I think it's a 24 by 36. It's a 2 feet by 3 feet. There it is. Whoa! Let's go in here real close. I want to uh, see all the detail, especially in this area. Now, you notice I'm, I'm, I'm showing you the ripples in the water. You see it? How it, all of this stuff in here is very impressionistic. If you were to isolate this area right in here, it would be nothing but an abstract painting. Just take the fish and everything out. It's abstract which is what I was showing you in the highlight on the painting that I was showing you. Look at the lily pads in this painting. There's more detail. You can see uh, little specks on them and a little light coming out of the middle. And has uh, little uh, flowers popping up, little grass, and way up on the top, we have some light filtering down. See that light? It kind of gives a very dramatic effect to the painting. I love to paint koi. Red, white, you get to use your cad red lights and your pinks and your greens. Now, back to our little painting up here. What else can we put in? You know, I, I, again, I know you guys can put more grass in, but I want you to make sure that you get, that's just white, that you get the dramatic effect in here. You know, you can go in and paint all the grass, which is not difficult to do. But I want you to learn how to get dramatic lighting in your painting. It will separate you from everybody else that's not doing it. Whether it's floral painting or this type of painting, this is what you need to do. Let's take a look at the painting that I have that we first started with, that we have framed up for you. This is the painting that'll be in the book for you. So you can refer to all the good stuff. Now when I say dramatic, what I mean is this stuff right in here. You see the light? You see how it's filtering out into just little dot, 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 dots? This flower, don't have it straight, but notice it's leaning into the painting. Again, I didn't have a chance to get all of this grass, but I like to see you get some of the tall grass going. A little more grass down in here. There's a, there is a clump back here which you should put in too. Notice how we re repeated the pink from these flowers. So it sort of walks on back. So we're taking the eye back. The eye hits the bright color here. It has no place else to go because it's dark out here. So what do you do? You come on back. The eye will always go to the lightest value in your painting. And where is that? It's right in here. This is where we want folks to stay. Any detail you want to put in, you're going to put in this area here. Everything else is secondary and everything else just floats into nothing, which adds that beautiful mystery to your painting. 
I know you can do it. It's just a matter of changing your thinking and getting more dramatic with your work. It'll, it'll change your life. It'll change your painting experience. If you guys are teaching out there, your students will love it. They'll keep coming back to you over and over. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Let's go out and photograph water lilies, but not where there's any alligators. <laughs> Take care. This is Series 5. I'm Gary Jacobs, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Het vierde boek van Gary Jenkins is uit. Vol bloemen, dieren en landschappen. Nieuw in deze uitgave is de serie Watervallen. Dit nieuwe boek is verkrijgbaar voor 34,50. Hiermee maakt u ook thuis prachtige schilderijen. Kijk voor bestelinformatie op omroepbaks.nl of teletekstpagina 333.